Hello everyone, happy Wednesday. I hope you all had a lovely Easter and most importantly ate lots and lots of chocolate. So I'm here with you today and the fantastic Simon Bailey. I had the pleasure of interviewing him last week. Take a listen. So are we cool to just jump in with a couple of questions? Yeah, go for it, absolutely. Ah. So the first question that I've got is a bit broad, a bit wide, but um, can you remember what sparked your interest in performing? Hundred um, percent. So I used to. I, I'm my. Um, I used to live in a town called Maidenhead, and um, it was. I lived in this lovely, like enclosed, enclosed little crescent type place. Um, and we were all very, very good friends with our neighbours. We all got on very, very well. And two doors down from me, um, uh, there uh, was my sister's best mate at the time, and her brother um, went to a school, and they were doing a production of Joseph. Okay. And I think I must have been five six <clears throat> and they were doing three school productions wow. um i went to go and watch the first production the first the first night of it uh and i made my parents take me back to both so i went oh to all th- i went i went to the full run <laughs> 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 all three days of them and um i remember yeah he he was playing the narrator um a guy called Fraser Lindsay was playing Joseph. I still remember it like vividly, you know, and I'm it's, I'm not six anymore. Like, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I remember it. And that's what got me. Joseph was what got me into it. Like uh, seeing that production, especially. And then subsequently, like they, they did, you know, they, the touring production came by Windsor. You know, Windsor was a really close town to me. It's where I went to school and there was the Theatre Royal Windsor. I went to go see it there. Then I went to go see the Palladium production with Jason Donovan and yeah, like they, that was what really Joseph was, was what sparked it off. I think for a lot of people, but Joseph really sparked it off for me. Um, so when I got to do it in in London, that was like one of the best one of the best phone calls yeah. I ever received was when they said, "Yeah, you're going to play fair." I was like, "What?" Yeah, it was um, yeah, it was nuts. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, I was going to ask you what your dream role would be. I guess it was was that it. I, I, I definitely at that time. <clears throat> well, actually, my dream role was because well, I, I loved it. I wanted to play the narrator, um, but but um, that one wasn't really that one wasn't really available. But no, definitely Pharaoh was. It just looked like such good fun, you know, yeah. to go and do that, to go and just um, do a little kind of nod to Elvis and be a part of all that and have this wicked rock and roll number and all that stuff. So that was definitely um, that was definitely a dream role. Um, you know, but then you know that, that, that then things change as you as you kind of get of older. And Tommy DeVito yeah. was a dream role of mine. Um, I saw you play that role. So oh, you did! It. Oh, it is. amazing! Yeah, yeah. 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 So that was that was a dream role. <clears throat> and of course, now as you as as I'm getting a bit older, there's different ones. You know, because yeah. you have to adapt to to age groups and and all that stuff. But yeah, certainly, you know, Tommy was Tommy was definitely up there, and um, it took a while because, and rightly so because uh, John Boyden had played it for six years um, and he was uh, incredible. I went to the, the first night and I I was like, this guy's, wow. <laughs> he's unreal. Insane. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, literally within the first like 10 minutes of that show, I just went, I've got to do that. I've got to yeah, do that. That's, just, the part I that's the part and huge shoes to fill with John because he was like unreal. So it was, it was a real, a real privilege to get to play that for, well, two and a half years, really. So I did it in London for a year and then on the tour. So, yeah, real privilege. Amazing. Yeah, it was a great show. It was a great yeah, show. Yeah, amazing. Um, you've talked a little bit about touring. Um, have you got any places in particular that have been your favourite? Yeah. Um, uh, Cardiff. Cardiff. Yay! Cardiff. <laughs> well, because my mum was Welsh, so all my family, all my extended oh family my gosh. Are, are still in Wales, really, apart from one cousin who moved to uh, moved to Canada. But... All of my extended family. Um, We're fabulous. Uh, yeah, <laughs> fabulous. Yeah, yeah. So fabulous. all of them are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love the death is what I always say. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. I, I, I kind of do a cod Welsh accent, which my cousins hate me for. Uh, so I do it whenever I get the chance. But um, I loved Cardiff. Um, the Bay Area. The, 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 well, the, the you know that Millennium Centre is just. It's an amazing Such a place, um, you know, and um, I, I love the people in, in Cardiff. Uh, obviously, I've got family there, so it means a lot. That's why uh, it was a bit of a shame on the Jersey Boys tour. I had quite a bad injury to my foot, so I had to miss the Cardiff the Cardiff section, oh. which, was, which was a bit gutting. But um, 
But still, I'm sure I'll go back another time. Uh, another uh, Liverpool as well. I love, I absolutely love Liverpool. Um, I think it's one of the most vibrant cities um, in the country. I've been there a few times now for various different reasons, and I, I love going there. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I th- ones like that. <clears throat> Glasgow. I wasn't. I, I'd never been to Glasgow before until until we did Jersey Boys. I'd only been to Edinburgh with Phantom, um, but with but Glasgow was. Glasgow was right. Yeah, Glasgow. Glasgow was <laughs> such a fun place, and the audiences were insane. Yeah. In good... <laughs> yeah. 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 Not in insane. Yeah. Insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They weren't, didn't just throw things at me. They did. You know. Yeah. It was that. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> and then, um, who are your musical influences? Wow, that's a broad one. So <clears throat> Frank Sinatra, were, like early doors, it was people like Frank Sinatra, Elvis. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Gosh, who? I mean, there's just so many of them, really. Freddie Mercury was one. Um, and in terms of in terms of musical theatre, uh, my biggest the, the person I, I kind of started to realise as I started to kind of get into musical theatre was Michael Bohr, obviously, because he's because yeah. um, he's just a legend. Um, and I had a brief opportunity to work with him last year. We did a workshop just one week. <clears throat> it was myself, him, and um, Jason Robert Brown. It was like one of the most amazing weeks I've ever had. Yeah. It's like these are just what am I doing here? You know, <laughs> um, which was super fun. Um, yeah, just I mean, because I, I I've I've got a different. I was brought up in a house of differing um, musical styles. Like my dad had a really eclectic taste in music. So <clears throat> he'd always, I mean, he played classical and then he played jazz and then he played not so much the rock. Rock was kind of something that I, uh, I always got into the rock stuff on my own, really. But just a widely different um, kind of, I don't know, just a, such a wide collection of music he had, um, you know. And so it was, uh, I had a really different and kind of varied, a uh, varied take on music. And um, that's why I kind of love in a way, I love every style because um, yeah. it's it's important. I think it's, yeah. it's it's part of a musical education. It's just important it to know everything yeah. and make your own decisions on what you like and don't like. Absolutely. And um, if you could duet with anyone across any genre of music, who would it be? Oh, do you know? Just because he's literally just been on, and it's the happiest song ever. Because I'm just looking out my window here, and it's such a nice day here. Um, uh, Michael Bublé's Beautiful Day just came on and I, it just put me in such a good mood so yeah. I'm going to say him because I think he's wicked anyway but um, yeah. I, I think he's got such a good take on stuff I, mean, I always love the the old style crooners you know and, and he's got he just kind of he's kind of got that morph into an old style crooner whilst being a, a new style entertainer as well so um, just because he's literally been on I'm going to say Bublé because I think we'd I think we'd do a nice take on me and my shadow <laughs> <laughs> And he comes across really chill as well. And I, I like that. Yeah. Mm. I like that. Oh, yeah. Sometimes, you know, people can come across and you're like, oh, oh I'm not sure. Yeah. You know, like a bit. I know it is serious. It's, it's a career. It's a job, but like a bit too serious. You know, yeah. sometimes you think, oh, really? <laughs> come on. It's, it's we. That's how I, I. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really into into that kind of thing of people taking themselves too seriously. It's I think take the job seriously, but not yourself. It's not, Um. you know, we're not. We're not rocket scientists, you know. We're here to entertain people, and while you take the job seriously, um, that's where it should. That's where yeah, it should. And actually, I've got a nice. I've got a good story about Michael Bublé. I know my my one of my best mates. He um he used to be a bar manager of <coughs> of the bar opposite Phantom. Okay. So after I'd finish, I'd you know I'd I'd go and see him for a drink, and um and he told me that Michael Bublé had been in because he was doing his O2 show and he was staying at that at the Haymarket. Um, whatever it's called, the Haymarket Hotel. And um, yeah, he said that one night he came down to the bar at like seven o'clock. He said he ordered a drink. He had a long chat with him. He bought him a drink. You know, he said he was the nicest guy, um, the nicest guy he'd met of, of those sort of types. So yeah. um, you, we can we can put a good stamp on Bublé. We can. He, he's, he's one of the good ones, clearly. It's, it's hard, <laughs> isn't it? When you have like a, almost like an ideology of someone, you know, you like their stuff and you think, oh God, they're really great. And then, you know, you hear stories about them not being the nicest of people and you're like yeah. oh and it totally yeah. like tints your view then like you're like oh well, I don't and you then become like I don't want to listen to music yeah. <laughs> I, I'm terrible exactly like that. What happens. I'm like I do not want to feel your success anymore yeah. because I do, you're not a nice person exactly no you're absolutely right I do the same I've met a couple of people like that where I'm you know people who have been on on the screen or, or music and I'm just like mm, no, I'm all right now I don't want to I'm all right but another open 
question what advice would you give your younger self I think it's sort of the advice that I'd give myself now because this is like like it's such a hard industry this one um you can find yourself going on a really good run of things when everything kind of dovetails and it's all great but then there's times when it's really not (laughs) you get hit in the face a few times but um I think the key to everything is just to never never give up you know it's um because the truth is you this industry um you feel very um um isolate is the wrong word it's just a word I've been hearing a lot recently um you feel very um kind of singular I suppose you're going for that audition on your own it's not that you're doing it in a team so every rejection that you take you take it personally and you think you're the only one who's ever taken a rejection. But the truth of it is, I mean, this is where social media comes into play, where everyone posts their successes, but not their failures. That's why that's where I don't like social media, because I think, well, no one's life is perfect. So post a bit of both. <clears throat> but that applies to what I'm saying is that um, if you hear a no from something like we all do, you hear no more times than you hear. Yes. Yeah. You realize you're not the only one who's ever going to hear no. You know, if you're going for a part, you're up against God knows how many people. And if it's 100, 99 of those are going to hear no. So you're not on your own. And you just got to. Uh, I love this. People, someone said to me once it was great because there was a job I really, really wanted to get. Yeah. And it was between me and one other. And I, I thought it was going to go my way. Didn't. Anyway. Um, and I told my mate about it. And she just she just went. She went, right. Take today. Grieve it tonight tomorrow you start again and I was like that's right you do have to grieve these things because yeah <clears throat> night you, you invest a lot of time into into yeah. it's not just like turning off an audition it's like yeah you got the part this could be months yeah and it's your own it's your it's your underlying thought from the day your agent calls you and says right you're going in at such and such a time then you get recall 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 and so these things take forever sometimes they don't but sometimes they do you know so it's a big it becomes a really big part of your life and of course people ask you questions about it all the time and you're like oh I don't know if I've got it yet so yeah you know you do have to allow yourself that time to to go oh that was all that was rubbish <clears throat> that was rubbish yeah. have a drink you know be grumpy and then wake yeah. up and forget about it that's it that's all you yeah. can do because that's what's the point of holding on to it because it's not going to get you anywhere it's done no and it might <laughs> stop you from getting something else that's how I always look at it you exactly know. exactly that yeah do you have a proudest performance moment well a few actually um yeah I've had some really lovely some really lovely moments I um, when, when I was in Les Mis um we did a performance because we I was in the 21st anniversary cast and so we overtook um, Cats as being the longest running show in the West End, um, you know, which was quite a, it was quite a big thing actually at the time. And so that was a really special performance and we had everyone come back. Uh, so Con Wilkinson was there and Michael Ball was there and, um, you know, we had like Patty Lapone and um, Elaine Pe- these Rebecca Kane, all these amazing people came back and we all shared the stage to do, I think it was um, one day more. It was one day more. Um, so that was a real, a real standout moment. Um, then, uh, you know, I, I was in um, I was in a, a, a vocal group a few years ago called Teatro and um, our, our, we were signed to Sony. And Sony had arranged for us to go on the Royal Variety performance. So we, we did that and met the Queen afterwards. And oh um, like, I mean, sharing a room, sharing a dressing room, like Bon We didn't share a room with Bon Jovi, but it, it, was, it was amazing. We just finished meeting the Queen in the lineup. And I was just yeah. like, that was mental. <laughs> and then I had a tap on my shoulder. This is no word of a lie. I had a tap on my shoulder. I, I thought with my mate, I was spun round and it was Bon Jovi. Oh my God. Yeah. And he just said, he just said he, and he genuinely said, he said, I just wanted to let you know, I said, I thought you guys did a really great job, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, cheers, John, turn around like that. <laughs> Literally, what just happened? Like, one of my absolute icons. And I was yeah. just trying to be like, yeah, nice one, cheers, pal. You'll do all right as well. Keep going, keep yeah. singing, keep singing. You'll up get the there, you'll get yeah. there. Yeah, never give up, John. <clears throat> That's what I keep telling people, never give up. <laughs> Um, oh my so yeah. gosh! Yeah, nuts. So, wow. so things like that, and um, then we did it with the same group. We sang to forty thousand people in Hyde Park for proms in the park and stuff like that. So <clears throat> I've had some amazing moments. I've been I've been really lucky 
over the years you know things that never ever take for granted or i never forget so um yeah lots of lovely moments. amazing there. memories yeah yeah, I yeah. Bet. And was there ever a time you thought you would take a different career path or have you always kind of strived for, for this? I think I've always strived for it. Um, I uh, The reason I got into it was because when I was at school, uh, I took theatre studies for an A-level and um, <clears throat> I wasn't I wasn't the best at the... Um, at the written stuff, you know, which, you know, which I, I didn't work probably as hard as I should have done because it was more performance that I was bothered about. So yes. um, when we when I got into it, um, we did a, mon- a monologue and a duologue for our for our exam. And uh, the external adjudicator for my my monologue was um, the rape scene from Streetcar Named Desire, um, which is quite intense for an, yes. for an 18 year old. But the um, the, extern- the, the external adjudicator gave me 21 out of 20 for, for what I did in my exam. So my, <laughs> which is the, the highest mark the school had ever got. So I was quite proud of that. But um, I had two different teachers for theatre studies. One of them basically came up to me and went, you didn't really deserve that. Oh. One of them, yeah. And I was like, oh, thanks. Thanks. How about you take the wind out of myself? But then the, the other one said, listen, I, I really think you've got, I think you've got something and I know it's not necessarily the path you, you're thinking you're going to take because I was going to go to university to study um, journalism. Okay. Um, yeah, because I was always quite good at the written word and um, my dad had been a, a journalist, you know, um, previously and I think he, it was kind of one of those things he wanted me to do but then that came up and she, and um, she gave me a form for the National Youth Theatre and she just said, I just think you should just give this a shot and if you don't get in, you don't get in, then you can blah, blah, blah. So yeah. that, that was it. And then I, I started from there. And from then, no. From then, um, I've never I've never looked back at all. Because I was, yeah, it's always been, I've been quite lucky in terms of, I, I started off getting jobs quite quite early on. So I was, yeah. the momentum was there a little bit, you know. So yeah. never, no, after that, never, no. No. Lucky I've got a, a weird one. Um, if you could speak any language, obviously apart from English, what would it be? Um, Ah, I, I really like Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, maybe Italian actually, because for for one of the companies that I I work for, I, I work for a, with a company called Incognito. So I do um, it's kind of more opera opera based singing for events like that. So um, I have to sing in Italian quite a lot, and singing in Italian is one of the most amazing things. Oh. Um, it's, yeah. just, just, it's just such an amazing feeling. So actually, now I'm going to change that to Italian because the feeling of singing in Italian is amazing. It's so brilliant. I should imagine being able to yeah. speak. It's such a lyrical language as well. It is. It's beautiful. And there's music to it. So I, yeah. I, Italian. Italian. Yeah, I, think, I used yeah. to do um, like the Welsh National Youth Opera and things like that. And yeah, I used to I used to love it. I remember doing, uh, I don't even know what graded exams were. It was like classical studies or something like that yeah and yeah I remember none of my pieces were ever in English and at like 16 17 it was like oh really like oh yeah what? and then as I got older I was just so much more appreciative okay it wasn't yeah. English it wasn't easy but it wasn't easy anyway to sing it was always very difficult stuff whether it was in English or not yeah um, but yeah Italian and Latin those kinds of languages yeah. to sing in oh my god it just sounds nobody has a clue what you're singing about but no. everybody goes wow that was incredible exactly there because it's just you almost don't need to isn't it you no. don't need to know because it's all it's all kind of there it's all in the dynamic yeah. of it so I think yeah that would um that would certainly would be, be it and it's yeah it's lovely to to kind of lose yourself in that as well I think um my last question for you yeah. is, I know things are on hold at the moment, but do yeah. you know what um, is in the pipeline for you? Do you know what's coming next? Well, the truth no. of it is, uh, well, no, because like I said, I was due to start, I was due to start a new show on the 27th of April, which uh, we were told ages ago was <clears throat> not postponed, but cancelled. Okay. Um, that would have taken me through till, I don't know, I think July or August. Um, so really, no, I mean, everything has been shut down. I mean, if it was, <clears throat> if you had a part in a film or you were uh, in a process for that, production's been shut down until a later date. It shows, I mean, shows that are going on at the minute are closing. I mean, it was it's horrible to hear about, uh, you know, shows like Waitress, Waitress and, yeah. you know, because I got some great friends in that. It was a lovely show. <clears throat> it's just, um, no, the, the simple answer is no. I've There's just no way of knowing what's going to go on. Um, I hope, I really hope people 
once we're all allowed back out again properly um, and people have deemed it to be safe, I hope people aren't scarred by this so they don't want to go into a theatre anymore. Um, because um, what we need right now <laughs> is for our, us lot to get back out there and do what we do and to go and perform for people and make people smile and make people forget and um, laugh with you, cry with you, all that kind of stuff. People need to be taken on a bit of a journey now. And I think yeah. in the most important thing is, is people's health and getting people healthy again and minimizing the horrible things that are happening to people. Yeah. Um, and once everyone, once this thing is done, it's important to get people back out and it's important for people to smile again. Yeah, um, definitely. It's, it's well, that's the most important thing in the world. So it's yeah. to make people happy. So I think uh, I really hope this isn't going to have that. <clears throat> it will have a negative effect for now, and that's understandable. But hopefully not detrimental. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. This is everything is fixable, and I just yes. people just um, I hope people know that. I you know they know that the best places to be now are cinemas and theatres and concert halls and yeah. all the things that go with it um because they're the things that make us happy yeah well it's not just us it's not just us who produce them direct them star in them you know chore choreograph them it's not yeah. just us it's 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 the audience as well it's it's just as important for them as it is for us it's you know yeah that's what i mean yeah together. yeah absolutely yeah. it's you know the best thing in the world is to is to make people smile yeah. that's why we do our job it's you know of course, all of us yeah. it's why it's why you do it. So, um, yeah, everyone needs a little bit of a lift now. So a bit happy. everyone needs a bit of happy because there's there's not too much of it about at the minute. You know, so um, it's good. It, the time will come. And uh, I think it will it'll be a good it will be a good day. You know, I was saying to my, my mate, David Thaxton, he was, it was amazing. He posted this tweet <laughs> just saying, can you imagine how amazing that first night of Les Mis is going to be when the first night when they're allowed yeah. back and it's like, tomorrow comes you'll be like what is yeah. going to be it's yeah. going to every single show that goes back you know the first gig the first whatever the first day back at work the first audience let in it's, it's going to be electric you know so absolutely that's going to be the one everyone's going to want to be either involved in or in the audience for exactly everyone's going to want to be there because yeah it will be because it is it's such a special thing for anyone involved in any show whether yeah you're you're in it you're part of it or you're watching it it's it's amazing to mm. to be there isn't it theater does so, so much for so many people and and affects people in so many different ways and um yeah when when that happens because this is going to be us for the next few months isn't it let's be honest yeah i think so um, so yeah when it when it happens oh my gosh you know you imagine the people who've put all their time into these films and then there there's premieres just after yeah you know people are going to go nuts it's going to go of course they are yeah, yeah i think it's going to be a bit of a golden time actually yeah um <clears throat> you know out of the ashes and all that so um i think it will be a golden time and i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to um everyone being allowed to do to do their own thing again and what i actually really loved was was your initial email was like let's make people smile i was like 100 percent. i mean that's exactly what i want to do you know so um so no it's been really nice you've got in touch it's been really nice chatting with you and uh um Lovely. yeah thank I you hope so it's... much for agreeing to do it not at all not at all no it's been no it's been a real pleasure it's been a real pleasure it has it's been lovely thank you so much this is gonna um oh god if i get my dates right hang on this is going to go up not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after. Okay, so I'll send cool. you I'll send you a link anyway. Um, and yeah, it'll be fab. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Well, let me know and um. Will do. Take it everywhere. <laughs> Thank you so much. You've been a star. Take care of yourself. My pleasure. You, you too. Take care. Bye. Bye. A huge thank you to Simon. I had a really great time. Such a lush interview. Really lovely person. So who's next? Well, as you know, I like my special guests, so I have got a few more up my sleeve. You'll have to stay watching though. Like and subscribe. Make sure you share with all your friends, your family. Let's share a smile together. Have a lovely week and I'll see you on Saturday with my next special guest. Here's a sneaky peek of what's to come. Take care. <laughs>